Hi there. One of the things I remember having at Christmas time as a child, back in the late 1700s or whatever it was, maybe not, was nuts. Walnuts, pecans, chestnuts, almonds. And what we used to use was these nutcrackers. You just put it in there, give it a good crunch, and use these little pickers to take the nut out of the shell. Well, times go by. I know that kids aren't much interested in having nuts at Christmas anymore, it seems. Everything changes, but I still like them. About 20 years ago, I made this nutcracker. It's got a little dowel pin that goes through here into the handle to hold it so you can use it to carry things around. You just put your nut in this little angle, give it a crunch, and you've got nuts. And then there's a place to hold the nuts, the shells, all the debris. Now, I'm going to turn this one. It's threaded, so this rod goes down in here. You put the nut inside, twist this down until it cracks. Dump out your nut and dig it out of the shell and you're in business. I still like nuts. So let's take a look at how we're going about making this nutcracker. This project is based on one by Ian Woodford that was published in the October 2016 issue of Wood Turning Magazine. Thank you for the inspiration, Ian. So what I have to start with is this was a piece of birch that I sliced, put in a piece of purple heart, glued it up. When it glue dried, I sliced it this way, put some purple heart in there, glued it up. And now this is what I've got to work with. It's a little over five inches long, a little over three inches square. It's not really square, but it doesn't matter, it's gonna be turned around anyway. And this piece, also birch, is going to be the piece that I thread to go into the nutcracker. Now the first thing I'm going to do is turn this round. Let's go over to the lathe and take a look at that right now. All right, I'm going to turn this round using my roughing gouge and I'm turning it at 2000 RPM. One thing I want to point out is the grain is running across here. It's not running parallel with the bedways. The reason for that is when I drill in to the end and thread the, in, the uh, female threads, it won't work well if it's going into end grain. So that's why it's turned this way, and I'll be going into the long grain. Now I want to put a tenon on this end so I can reverse it into a four jaw chuck. This is the tap I'm going to be using to create the female threads. It's one and one quarter inch. The Forstner bit I'm using to drill the hole to accommodate this is one eighth of an inch less or one and one eighth of an inch. So I'm going to drill this in now. This piece you see on the end of the tap is just a way to help guide it straight. When you get close to where you're finished, you can take this off so it's out of the way and then continue tapping with the tap. So now I'm going to drill this hole, turning it at 250 RPM. Don't want to overheat the bit.
I have the bit in an extension now so I can get deep enough. I want to drill it four and a half inches deep. And I have a piece of masking tape on the extension that will indicate when I've reached that depth. I need to pull it out frequently so I don't end up with the shavings jamming up against the extension. And that's got our four and a half inches. Perfect. Now I am going to put the tap in the hole and start to turn that. I've locked the spindle and I'm going to use a half inch wrench to turn this in. At the same time I will have the live center brought up into that little hole to make sure it stays on a true straight course. So while I'm turning this I have to also at the same time turn the live center in. Let's take a look at this. And I have to do a little turning and then take it out repeatedly so that those chips don't bind in there and cause me problems. This is a little tedious, and when you're doing it with real hardwood, it can take a long time. So I'll be back after I have some of this finished. Well, I've got it in about as far as I can go driving it this way, so now I'm using this extension from a half inch socket set where the ratchet usually goes in fits on there perfectly and then I can put a wrench on here the turning is tough enough I'm actually using a 10 inch adjustable wrench and it's going fairly well I also put some paste wax on the threads just to help out a little bit a little ways to go yet Alright, the threading is finished in there. I did this test piece a couple of days ago just to see how the male threads would work out. Let's just see how this fits in here. Very nice. No slop, nice and snug. Almost possibly too tight, but I quite like that. I think I'll stay with that. So now I'm going to finish shaping this piece. See what we can get here. I'm just going to put a cone on the live center in here to keep it steady. Do a little shaping with a 3 8 inch bowl gouge. I'm turning at 2000 RPM. I think I'll do some cutting with the skew chisel. Oh, I won't. That is not a clean cut. I'll have to stay with the gouge.
All right, I'm quite pleased with it so far. I think I'm going to sand this now. All right, I've sanded it down to 400. Put on a coat of sanding sealer, sanded it to 600 grit to get rid of the raised grain. Then I put a couple coats of Minwax Wipe On Poly on here. It's now dried and ready. I'm really pleased with the way the grain seems to follow all the way around here. Looks lovely. I'm going to part this off, but when I do, I don't want to just get in there with the parting tool, jab in there and have everything fray and fall apart. So I'm going to use my skew chisel, score a line at the end, and then use the parting tool on the far side of that. So let's take this off. All right, that came up very nicely. Well, I'm happy with this so far. Now, the next thing I need to do is drill a hole in the side. That's where you put the nut in it. I could just drop nuts down in here, but if you've got a larger nut, it won't fit, won't work, and you can get shells and things trapped in there if you can't dump them out properly. Now, most of the guys that I've seen do this, drill a hole while this is square, so it's stable on the drill press and they drill straight through it all the way. I did not want to do that because when I drill a hole in it and then go to turn it around, you often get chipping around that hole. I didn't want that. I also don't want the hole to go all the way through. I want to be able to hold this like this and do it horizontally if I like. So I want it to contain that nut by having the other side blank. All right, what I want to do now in order to hold this is put it in this cradle I made. So it'll sit in here, I'll hold it tightly with my hand, bring the bit down and drill through until it goes into where the threads are. So let's get over the drill press and see how this works. I have it sitting in the cradle, lined up and ready to go. Now, I used a flexible ruler to measure between the strips of purple heart, and I found the center. Then I measured up one inch from the bottom. I'm using an inch and a half bit. Half of that is three quarters and I wanted a quarter of an inch uh, below the hole. So now I'm ready to go. And one thing I want to point out, don't get a heart attack here. When I reached in, I did a test and I noticed it looks like my hand is right at the bit. But that's just the angle. I'm fine, I promise. So let's just get this thing drilled. I'm drilling very slowly because that blade, the, pardon me, the teeth on the bit could easily tear that away. So I just want to go very slowly and also try not to do any too much chipping. Well, I don't know if you can see inside there, but I'm pleased with that. I think we'll go on to the next step now. Well, I'm very happy with this so far. The only thing left to do on this part is finish off the bottom. And I have an idea on how I'm going to do that. I'm just letting it cook away in my little mind for a while till I come up with a good plan. Next step is to make the male threads. To do that, I need to take this piece and turn it down to exactly one and one quarter inches, and I mean exactly. This has to fit inside this sleeve. This is a Delrun plastic sleeve. What you do is push the round blank in, and then there's a bit in the router, which is spinning, and it feeds it through. So I'll show you how that works when we get to that point. 
Now let's go over to the lathe and turn this. I have my calipers set to exactly 1.25 inches. As I turn this down, I will repeatedly check until I get it to where I want it. And then I'm going to very carefully turn it probably to about half of the length to that one and one quarter inch. So I'm going to start with my roughing gouge. Then I will go to my skew chisel and I'm going to be turning it at 1000 RPM. Now that I'm extremely close, I'm going to switch to my skew chisel, do a little bit finer cutting. That's where I want to be, now I just need to maintain that all the way along here. make sure that I'm getting a straight cut. I just eyeball straight down along there and match it up against the bedway. It's not the cleanest cutting I've ever done. And now it's close enough that I don't want to use any sandpaper to clean it up better, or I'm just going to make it smaller. So let, now let's take it over, put it in the jig, and see about threading this. All right, if you look closely inside here, you should be able to see the tip of the router bit that's up there. And this is the output side, and you can see that there are threads in there. So when this piece of wood is pushed through, the router bit is going to cause the threads to be formed and then they are going to go into these female threads and be fed through. So I'll put on my headphones, my ear protection, and we'll try this out and see how it's going to work. Sorry about the blinding light in the camera there. Now let's take this out and see what it looks like. Threads look great. I guess the test is, will it fit inside the female threads properly? And they do, they feel great. All right. I'm just going to thread the rest of this. 
Okay, the male threads are ready to go. I just need to cut this off, put a cap on it of some kind. First thing I want to do now though, is I want to finish off the bottom of this. So I threaded an extra long piece and I put it into this waste block, good and tight in there. Now I've turned this down to 150 RPM. I'll just thread it on here. tight and see how smooth it's going to run. That's looking real good. Now I just want to turn off that little knob that's on the bottom and sand the bottom. I'll be back when that's finished. The bottom of this is a long way out from the headstock and the further you come out from the headstock the more chance you're going to have vibration and the worse that vibration will be. I'm going to be running this at 1000 rpm I'm going to be using my quarter inch bowl gouge and I'm going to be taking the finest cuts I can. I don't want to take any chances on knocking this off of here. It probably was not even real necessary to take that little knob out of there. I'm going to be drilling this, putting a recess in for my logo point, but I wanted to make sure I could find the exact center to put the Forstner bit on. Now I'm going to recess that. I'll put a ring or two on here for decoration and sand the bottom. I've shown that many times before, so I won't bother holding you for that, and I'll be back as soon as that's finished. This is the piece that is going to thread down into this base, go in here and crack the nuts. I've put it into that waste block, the threaded waste block that I made. I've made a mark three quarters of an inch up from what will be the top of this base. And I'm going to just part that off. Then I'll be making a cap. I'll put a quart, inch and a quarter hole in it and then set it on here, glue it on, and that will be what I use to turn this in and out of the base or the nutcracker. I'm not really sure what I should be calling this because the whole thing is the nutcracker. So I'm just going to part this off. I'm running it at 1000 RPM. I'm just going to finish cutting this off with a saw. I drilled a test hole in this piece just to make sure that this was going to fit. And it's just great. So I drilled one in this, which is going to be the cap. I'm going to glue it on there, give the glue time to set, and then I'm going to come back and turn this cap. All right, it's in there now. It is not running true. I think the threads are running fairly true, but got a problem with the cap, so I'm going to have to chew that up a little bit. Now this is not steel, so I know there's going to be some degree of flex in here, so I'm going to have to make very gentle cuts. So let's just see what we can come up with here. I'm going to be using my 3 8 bowl gouge, at least to start, and I've got the speed set to 2000. Alright, I want to get that just slightly concave, so I'm going to switch over to my spindle gouge and give that a go.
It's not looking too bad in there. I'll try to shape the top here a bit. This is where it could get interesting. Okay, I want to bring the diameter down a little bit. That's a little larger than I want it to be. A couple of good cracks in here. I decided to put some thin CA glue in just to prevent, hopefully, them coming apart on me. Now I just want to bring the size down a little bit. And I'm going to leave it at that. I would like it just maybe just a hair larger in diameter than what the bottom part of this is. I'm going to put a bit of a concave section in here, just get, make it a little easier for the hand to fit in there, to grip it. I think that'll be all right once I sand that. I want to make this a little narrower yet, so I'm going to take some off of the top. All right, I want to flatten this now, right at this point. Take it off flat, and then from this line, I want to just dome shape this a little bit. All right, I want to drill a shallow recess here and then put some purple heart in there, just some kind of a contrasting little crown. I drilled a one and one quarter inch recess in here, and it's fairly flat just outside of that recess. Then I took a piece of purple heart, very jagged piece of purple heart, and I've glued it onto a waste block, a shop threaded, shop made waste block. If you don't know how to make these and you'd like one, I'll put a link in the description box to a video showing how to make those. Now, if you can see this line, that's an inch and a quarter diameter. So I want to use my parting tool and take everything away outside of that to about an eighth of an inch depth and then see how this fits in to here. Once I've got it where I want it, I will take this off of here, glue it in, and then after that glue dries, I will turn this piece just to try to get a little bit of a cap there. Like I believe it's called a cabochon. So now I'm going to take some of that off with the parting tool.
pretty shallow there, but I just want to see if it's going to fit into this recess. Oh, it looks and feels like it fits in there fine. So I'll just get a little more depth there, and then I can set it in there. Well, I am not going to get it to fit any better than that. So I'm going to take this off. I'm going to glue it in here. And then I'll be back. I'm just going to take this off of the glue block. This area I'm going to be turning is a long way out from the headstock. And even when you're turning something with steel supports, you can get vibration. With this being wood, I'm not sure what to expect here. But I'm going to put this live center on there to hold it as long as I can for support. Now I'm going to be first turning this just to get rid of the jagged edge. So I'll be turning toward the headstock, which will help a little bit. And then we'll take it from there. All right, I've got it round now. Time to start trying to take some of this off of here. Well, it seemed pretty obvious the only way I was going to get this to run true was to use my steady rest. So I've got it on here now, and we'll see what kind of job this will do. I'm going to be running at 1000 RPM. All right, I'm just going to sand all this now. Well, there it is. It's finished now. I'm quite happy with it. Works very well. Well, thank you for joining me. Hope this gives you an idea. There's plenty of time between now and Christmas for you to make some of these as gifts if you want to do that. Have yourself a great day in your shop. Thanks for dropping in. Please drop in next time, and don't forget to subscribe. Take care. Be safe in your shop. Bye now.